promised the, the citizens in Oslo that we in 2019 shall have a level city with large car-free areas. That will make it a more friendly city. We will have more space for pedestrians, for children, for bicyclists, and we will also reduce the pollution that we have in the air because people are dying from the high polluted air in Oslo and we can't accept that. Uh, politicians uh, now in Oslo have said that they want 20% less car journeys inside of Oslo and additionally have the city centre free of cars. Uh, so how that affected us is basically to say we have to speed up. We have to speed up the process to get new metro lines, get new trams, get new buses and new modes of transportation, uh, car sharing or what that might be. This is a development that is going one direction, less cars, fewer cars and uh, better uh, facilities for biking and for walking. So, so it's, it's no question about that, it's just the speed and how we maintain uh, the good atmosphere in the city while we are doing this. This is a large area, it's not only a couple of blocks, it's, it's the whole downtown. So they put the vision before and said, we're going to do this. And now they're investigating how, you know, which streets to start with. Our goal is in the next three, four years to build 60 kilometers of new bike lanes and bike tracks. In the past few years, the city has only been able to build like one, two, three kilometers of new infrastructure. So bumping that up is a massive increase. The former government was very positive for cycling. They weren't that eager to remove car parking to make space for bike lanes. Uh, with the new city council, that's no longer a problem. Oslo is one of the fastest growing cities in Europe and we are increasing the inhabitant number with like 10 to 11,000 new inhabitants each year. Uh, and that is of course a huge challenge. We have to give people the possibility to live in the city without having their own private car. And what we see now is that it's a lot of car sharing systems that are popping up. A lot of uh, families want to live near the city centre, which they didn't do before, and, but they don't have their own private car. We have to observe all growth and, and journeys with public transportation, bicycling and walking. And actually we said walking first, the more they walk the better, and then bicycling, and then public transportation, and then come cars, etc. To me it seems like uh, the Norwegians are used to using their body to, to get around. The public transit here is, is, is really functioning well and there is a lot of great areas for pedestrians, uh, so a lot of people do walk as well. So this is one of the central streets in Oslo. It's a very popular shopping street and it's also an important link between the city centre down there and a residential area like the hip district, Grinalöka. It's a totally new kind of street in Norway. There's a lot of shops here and they need to get delivery of the goods. So we decided that we're gonna make it difficult to drive here. It's not gonna be allowed to park, uh, but it's gonna be accessible for cars. We are now uh, removing a lot of the parking places that we have in the city center areas to, to give more space for bicyclists and pedestrians. And we have already started to build new bicycling lanes and roads. Yeah, so all this street, all parking has been removed. Yeah, it just happened last week, like they started doing the work last week. So you're here at a very good time because right now the street is being remade uh, with new asphalt and removing car parking to make space for bike lane and bus lane and you can see the trucks in the back with the asphalt. So we left some space to put the red asphalt that we use on bike lane. The other side uh, they're making a bus lane so when you cycle down you cycle in the bus lane and up you cycle uh, in a bike lane. I've been helping a big new urban development within this downtown core building hundreds of new uh, dwellings and blocks and the, the precondition for that development is that it's, it is to be car free. So it's a precondition for every new development in, within the downtown core. What we're looking at is a street, it's actually a bridge. 
it's had bike lanes for many years, but what we did this year, and that's we're doing that all over town, is that we're upgrading our existing infrastructure because Oslo unfortunately has a lot of narrow bike lanes. So a quick fix for us that doesn't require a lot of planning and years and rebuilding, you know, is to just like make them as wide as possible and then narrow the car lane as much as possible. Minimum standard for cars and then maximum for bikes. Oslo is not known for being like a really bike friendly city and to like go out and sort of like do a statement on it, we're gonna do this. It's really great. Yeah. It's more people biking every year. Yeah. Uh, every winter you see more people out winter biking. Will they manage to do it in the timeline they said? There has to be seen, but at least we feel like there's a good movement forward. So um, I'm working for Ruter which is a public uh, transport organization uh, in Oslo and Akershus, the main capital and the district around in, in, uh, in Norway. And uh, we uh, are responsible for uh, public transportation, meaning trams, uh, metro, uh, boats and buses, and uh, make approximately 350 million journeys each year, which we are responsible for. And an interesting part of uh, Forutri is now that we're in uh, uh, Oslo, is probably the city in, Euro in Europe with the highest growth, and our politicians had asked us that that growth of people, which means more travel, all of that growth has to be observed by public transportation, walking and bicycling. So we have to be that good that we approximately take 5% growth in public transportation each year. These are uh, city centre buses and if you see it, it's got four doors. And the reason for that is to make it an, as, a, as efficient as possible for people to go out and in uh, inside the bus because if uh, it takes too long, uh, the, of each stop, the journey for me and you will take too long and then we're not going to take the bus, we're going to take the car. So when you go on board, um, it should both be, be simple but also make sure that we get the money for your, your way. And uh, if you're actually inside of Oslo, you don't need to show your tickets. Uh, we assume that you have a, you're a paying customer and that works, we work with trust, uh, so we get efficiency. If you take a bus from here and out to uh, the district outside of Oslo, uh, Akershus, then uh, we, you have to pay.